Hey guys, Craig here with GeekTech.e, back with another video. Today we're taking a look at the Xperia Z3 from Sony. Uh, this is Sony's update to the Xperia Z2, which includes a new design, um, improved uh, camera performance, uh, new display, and uh, latest uh, from Qualcomm with the Snapdragon 801 chipset. Uh, we're going to be taking a quick look around the device, uh, sorry, the device with the uh, design uh, uh, changes that they've made. Um, the included performance upgrades, the camera, and then we're going to talk about battery performance and stuff like that. So uh, sadly we don't have any of the box contents, we were just literally sent out the device and the box itself. So we don't have any way of showing you what uh, is included, but it does come with a charger, USB cable, and a set of earphones uh, from Sony. But we will start the review off by giving a look at the box and then moving over and starting off by taking a look at the design of the new Xperia Z3. Uh, so let's get this review going. Okay, so this is just a quick look at the box that the Sony Xperia Z3 comes in. If you saw our Xperia Z3 compact review, you would have seen that it is nearly identical to it. The only thing that's really changed here is the design and name and stuff like that on it. But uh, nonetheless, I thought I'd give a quick look around the box anyway, just in case anyone wants to see it. Uh, this is three of the colours that it comes in. So we've got uh, white, uh, sort of goldish brown, and then obviously full on black. Um, it details all the specs somewhat here, um, as you can see. Uh, so if you want to pause that, you can uh, pause that there and hopefully it'll be a uh, decent enough quality so you can actually uh, read it all. But again, I'm going to be going through the specs now shortly um, and detailing them as much as I can. But again, I thought I'd just give a quick look at the box that the device comes in. Um, I will quickly open it. Again, sorry, I don't have the charger USB cable or anything like that. It comes with literally just a bunch of literature and compartments and stuff. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the box let's move over and take a look at the phone and talk about the uh, design first off and we'll take a look around the device but that's pretty much it there okay so this is the xperia z3 itself and um, not much has changed over the xperia z2 but we are seeing some design changes uh, performance changes uh, camera changes and stuff like that so before we start getting into the design i want to quickly run through the specs i'm going to do this pretty fast but I will probably end up repeating most of them when I'm talking about individual areas. So we have Android 4.4 kickout with Xperia as uh, well Sony's own uh, UI skin over the top. 5.2 inch IPS LCD display with 1080p resolution and 424 pixels per inch. Um, not much of a difference over the Xperia uh, Z2, but the brightness has definitely been increased, but we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 chipset with quad-core 2.5 GHz Crate 400 processor and Adreno two, uh, 330 GPU with 3 GB of RAM. Again, I'll be getting into that more when I talk about the performance. 20.7 megapixel camera on the back, which supports 4K 30 frames per second, 1080p 60 frames per second, and uh, I think it supports slow motion. I'm actually not 100% on that. But it does support, um, uh, it, still, it still has all the same superior auto functions and apps that we've seen with the previous Xperia devices. Um, we also have a new lens, which is 25mm wide angle, uh, which support basically gives you better, de more detail in the, in the same type of shots, uh, which is definitely an advantage. And we also have a higher ISO level, which will allow for better uh, low light performance. Uh, on the front of the device, we have the 2.2 megapixel front facing camera, which includes 1080p video recording. Inside, we have 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes built in storage, depending on which one you get. But we also have a micro uh, SD slot right there. And as you can see, that does have a flap on it, which means we have IP68 certification for uh, up to 1.5 meters or 13 minutes of waterproofing and dustproof. Um, we have uh, active noise cancellation with secondary microphone, as you can see there. And inside we have a 3,100 milliamp battery, uh, which is pretty high for a device. Like uh, the Galaxy Note 4, for instance, has a 3,220 milliamp battery, and it's fairly much larger than that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the specs. Um, so we're going to be talking about the design now shortly. Also, uh, just a quick mention, we also have 3G and LTE support but that could be dependent on where you are in the world but that's pretty much it for the specs again uh, i'm going to be talking about more of them when i start uh, going on the device the first thing we're going to talk about is the design and uh, we're going to move in for a closer look okay now it's time to take a look at the xperia z3 design this is one of the biggest changes we're going to see over the z2 um, at least the most noticeable one because everything else is internal um, but yeah okay so sony have definitely been putting a lot of effort uh, with the design changes because I mean, they've been releasing devices every six months for the past, at least the past year. 
Um, I think it was six months after we saw the Z1 from when the Z ex itself launched, and that was a big, massive, um, okay, not massive, but it was a decent um, design change. But here we have another one. Okay, so uh, the main criteria here is that we still have the same metal frame around the device, which I'm going to zoom in now and show you, as you can see. It's more uniform and it feels much better in the hand. Again, it's got a slight curve, as you can probably see, hopefully see there anyway. Um, as you can see, yeah, okay, so there you can probably see it much better. Um, yeah, it's got a slight curve around the device, and we still have the same flaps around everywhere. We still have the same location for all the buttons. We have the power button volume rocker right next to each other. We have the camera, dual press camera key there, and at the bottom here, we have nothing. Again, pretty much the same as what we've seen before. Um, I will get closer now in a second. Here we have the loudspeaker, and here we have the proprietary dock uh, connector from Sony, which, to be honest with you, I've barely really seen them do anything with them. And lastly, we have the micro USB slot. Um, I'll actually flip this one out as well. This is the nano SIM slot and the micro uh, SD slot right there as well, as you can see. Um, yeah, so the device does uh, include waterproofing IP68 certified, which means 1.5 meters for 30 minutes, um, which is definitely a nice thing to see uh, Sony continuing with, uh, as uh, it's one of their kind of niche things that they're definitely putting a lot of focus in, and they're making sure that people, when they go for a Sony device, with one of their flagship devices, over the last year anyway, it'll have waterproofing. The, the Xperia Z3 Compact itself had it as well which is great. Okay, so we have the full metal frame, which includes kind of like, um, I guess you could call it a separation on the corners. Can't really be certain if that's for a little bit of extra protection, but it is nice that it's sec actually separated because technically um, that might mean that the shock can't actually travel through the device, um, especially if it hits the corner. As you know, if you've ever seen one of our cover reviews, we make this I always emphasize this when I'm doing a cover review is that the corners are very important for low impact points because that will all but guarantee a shattered display if it hits it. So it's nice to see that that's separated. Although if the contact is here on the display itself, that means that shot can't travel through here, which means it may end up traveling through here. But again, I'm hoping that means that because they have this little uh, difference here, that it means they've put a little bit of thought into protection and hopefully that uh, will benefit from drops. But again, the design isn't all that much different than what we've seen before um, on the Z2. Um, as you can see, most of it is the same, but it is thinner and lighter uh, than before with the, hang on, I have the measurements there. It's 146 millimeters uh, wide, or sorry, 146 millimeters long, as you can see there. Uh, we have 72 millimeters long, or sorry, 146 meter, uh, millimeters long, 40, uh, 72 millimeters uh, width, and it is 7.3 millimeters thin. It weighs 152 grams. So basically what that means is it's thinner, lighter than the previous Z2, which is definitely um, an update. I mean, regardless of whether or not it looks better, which I do think it does, it's still an update nonetheless because we have better specs inside. Um, but yeah, so overall, there's not much of a difference between over the, Z, the Z2, but again, Sony have put a good amount of effort in trying to perfect the design. That's not to say that this design is perfect, but it's fairly close, and I'm very pleased with it. It feels great in the hand when you're using it. Uh, it is a very large device, but I didn't really have any issues using it with one hand, as you can see. Um, usage was fairly uh, easy. So for a 5.2-inch device, that's not an easy task, but it worked pretty well for this. So a uh, very nice design and definitely improvement over the Z2. Not much, not so much that I would ever recommend anyone with a Z2 upgrading to the Z3 unless they were like, you know, ridiculous and they wanted to have the newest thing regardless. But it's definitely an update nonetheless. Um, yeah, so it is nice to see that we have micro SD slot, we have waterproofing uh, and we have a lovely uh, glass uh, reflective back there that we've seen before from Sony. Sadly, we don't have any form of removable battery but I guess that's just something you have to deal with because to be honest with you, I don't think I've seen a metal uh, device with waterproofing and a removable battery. I just don't think it's something that can be done right now. Perhaps maybe in the future we will probably see it, but I think for Sony, they wanna concentrate on making sure that the device is waterproof without worry or back cover you know, becoming an issue so they don't bother with that. And um, Which I know for a lot of people won't be an issue, but for me, I do like having a removable battery. 
Um, but again, it's not an issue for some, so if it's not an issue for you, grand if it is, it is. So that's pretty much a preferential thing. But that's pretty much it for the design. Um, again, it's an update. It's not much of an update, but it is nice. It's thinner, lighter than the previous device. Uh, it feels more comfortable in the hand than before. It's um, it's it's got a nice solid feel to it. Um, I hate throwing the word the word around premium feel to it because to be honest with you, I think the Xperia Z3 Compact, which had a didn't have a metal housing, felt fantastic for a 4.6 inch device that that was. That that device was insanely premium, but it didn't have to. It doesn't have to have metal. I don't like the idea that metal automatically means premium, but this is definitely a premium device because it includes waterproofing includes a lovely back cover on it and um, it looks beautiful feels great in the hand so you couldn't really ask for more from uh, a nice design so we've got beauty and function from the sony xperia z3 design which is definitely a nice touch okay before we jump into the display and camera uh, features on the xperia z3 i wanted to do a quick benchmark and talk about the performance of the device and um, pretty much every aspect ui wise is completely smooth and lag free I haven't seen anything and um, that being said though we're not seeing any form real form i guess you could say of a uh, performance upgrade over the z2 we still have the same crate uh, 400 uh, cpu which is just basically a higher clock rate at 2.5 gigahertz over 2.3 gigahertz so while there is technically a performance increase i don't think anyone's ever going to notice it but what i will do is i will run geekbench 3 here and you can get an idea of the type of performance you can expect from it. But again, everything that I've done on it so far from using the camera to gameplay uh, has all been completely smooth. I haven't noticed any real issues um, with performance. Again, GTA experienced a little bit of lag when we had all the settings up to max, but once we changed the, the um, graphic settings, the texture settings, I guess you could say from max to high, everything ran smoothly as expected, which we've seen from every device, including the Galaxy Note 4. Although I think with the Galaxy Note 4, it was a little bit better when we have everything to max. In fact, you could actually probably play it on max settings. I wouldn't though, because I prefer to make sure that the frames per second were perfect and performance was solid. But again, I don't think you're ever gonna run into performance issues with the device, not, I mean, not in the next two years anyway. I haven't seen anything require that kind of performance yet. And here we can see the results. Again, not the highest results we've seen. Again, the Galaxy Note 4 took the lead with the latest Snapdragon 805 chipset but 966 on a single core and 2647 on the multi-core score, which is, I mean, that's flagship performance. Again, not much of an increase over the Z2, if at all, but, um, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I, I see no reason for performance to be any higher, because again, you're not gonna notice the difference in the real world applications. But we do have a gameplay video you can check out and see the, the raw footage of the actual game being played where we set up a camera and we pointed at it and you can compare that to pretty much every phone review we've done we do the exact same gameplay so you can kind of see i mean regardless of the device even from a year ago with the snapdragon 800 you're not really going to see a difference they all pretty much perform the same and uh yeah you're not going to run into any issues everything was smooth throughout ui camera gameplay so that's pretty much it for performance again you're not going to run into any issues at least we don't expect anything in the next run android 5 should hopefully uh run perfectly as well in this which i expect Okay, now it's time to talk about the display included on the Xperia Z3. Um, Sony have included, again, a 5.2 inch 1080p display, so no size change or uh, resolution change from the previous Z2, or for that matter, the Z1. Although that did include a five inch display, it was 1080p, so technically it had a higher, I guess not technically, it did actually have a higher PPI. Um, now we're looking at a PPI at 424. Um, okay, so the only real difference between this and the Z2 itself is that this display is much, much brighter. Um, when I was taking all of the camera shots, um, it was fairly sunny and the sun kept hitting the display every time I turned. Um, and basically, it didn't really affect it. I was still able to continue on. Um, the only negative thing is that the display is fairly reflective. Um, I don't know if you're going to see it there, but you can see a reflective nature of it. And that did kind of, like, I mean, that happened... A good bit when i was outside but again that's only dependent if you have a bright thing from across the room or something that can actually reflect off it but if you're in a dark room you're not really going to notice it but again display display quality wise uh color is fantastic i mean it's nicely saturated and uh decent looking uh detail is pretty much typical of any uh decent um 1080p uh, display um there's nothing fantastic about this it's not definitely not the best display we've seen but 
if it, like, I mean, it's great for a 1080p display, you're not going to turn around and go, that looks crap or anything like that. You're going to look at this display and go, everything looks decent. You're not going to be blown away simply because it's pretty much identical to what we saw with the Z2 and very close to what we saw with the Z1 itself. Um, so not much of a difference, nothing spectacularly new or different, but it is brighter. Right now I have it at full brightness, but you can see it and I've got two spotlights, one there, one there pointing at it, and they're pretty much, I mean, there's no issue brightness wise. Um, yeah, so I mean, it is a handy thing to have uh, a, bright, a, a very bright display for future use uh, because direct sunlight can be a bitch. Um, but yeah, you can see a picture there and I'll zoom. I'll fix that zoom. Uh, let's get that to rotate. I'll just kind of give you an idea. But again, the gameplay video that I do also is kind of aimed at showing you the quality of the display as well, I guess you could say. But things like this are kind of things you need to see in person. But in, I guess you could say in my professional opinion after seeing every display this year from all the latest smart smartphones, this, I mean, it's not the best I've seen, but it's by far not the worst. Um, I hate to say it, but the LG G3, which had a fairly high resolution at 2560 by 1440, was in fact worse than this. Um, and that's not to say this is bad. I don't want it to sound like I'm saying it's worse than this because this is bad. This is actually a really good display, but I guess to say it's not the best I've seen. Um, the Galaxy S5 had a spectacular display, and the Galaxy Note 4 had the best display I've seen in a long time. Um, but yeah so i mean viewing angles are pretty fantastic um again you can see the brightness and reflection thing kind of happening there but mostly um i found the screen um uh, perfectly ample for a flagship device and um very you know very nice to use and i mean there's, there's no negatives i guess you could say by the reflective nature of the glass but i guess you could say that pretty much about most smartphones nowadays anyway but uh, yeah, so Sony have done a decent job in upgrading the brightness levels of the device. Um, so direct sunlight and that reflective nature is kind of dulled down a little bit compared to the Z2. So uh, it's a very nice display and they've done a, a good job picking the right one to go with their phone since they didn't make it themselves. But again, yeah, so that's pretty much it for display. And now we're going to move on and talk about the camera itself. Okay, so Sony are including again the 20.7 megapixel camera that we've seen before, but there are some slight differences this time around. Uh, Sony have gone with a 25 millimeter lens and a higher ISO level. So basically, we're not really seeing much of a quality difference. Um, and the best way to describe that is pretty much what you saw with the Z2 and the Z1 are nearly the same. Um, but now we have a wider shot and a higher ISO level. Now, the, sh the, fa the photos look fantastic. Um, they really do look great in HDR videos and stuff like that. It's all supported. We have uh, image stabilization and um, HDR video and all. They're all fantastic. They all work really, really well. In fact, the image stabilization is some of the best I've seen in a camera uh, on a smartphone. Um, I don't know if you're going to pick up. There's a helicopter flying over there. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so basically, uh, we have the all the, the topical flagship camera stuff that we've seen before. 4K support, 1080p, 60 frame support. And it's all fantastic. The problem is, it's not really any different than the Z2. I mean, the 25 millimeter lens and the increased ISO level for a lower, uh, better low light shot are a nice addition. They're not enough to turn around and go, okay, this is a great upgrade. Um, it is nice. It's a fantastic camera. Again, it's 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 great. It's only a slight upgrade over the Z2. And I think basically, um, <laughs> the best thing to say is that Sony are gonna they're starting to see these kind of negative returns on their, their whole six month cycle thing is because there's not really that much they can throw into the device to make it better. So when you look at the Z2 and you look at the Z3, you're gonna see 20.7 megapixel camera. I mean, from an advertising point of view, that's not really any different. No one's gonna turn and go, oh, so it's upgraded. It's not, it's like, I mean, they're not gonna see an upgrade. It is better, just they're not gonna know that's better, okay? So you can write down 25 millimeter wide angle lens, but to be honest with you, a person's not gonna turn around and jump on it just because of that, and I don't expect them to either. Um, but yeah, performance of the camera is fantastic. It's just, it's not that much different than the Z2. You can check out our video quality, vid uh, the video quality videos. You can check out the, the camera videos that I've done. You can see the quality for yourself, although YouTube does do a little bit of damage to them. You get an idea of what's gonna be available compared to the other phones that I've done camera videos on. So I did uh, 1080p with um, Superior Auto, then I switched over to manual for HDR 
with the same i did a video for 4k and then i did a separate video for 1080p at 60 frames per second because now youtube supports it so you can kind of get a look and then you can jump onto the link below for the full review which is way more detailed and includes all the pictures that i've taken and uh, there's also a dropbox link in there so you can get all the full resolution shots as well so you can get a real like i mean a full-on okay that's a picture that was taken and I always do them in the same place. So again, you can actually compare these to, say, the Galaxy Note 4, the Galaxy Alpha, the Galaxy S5, the HTC One M8, pre previous devices. I never reviewed the Z2, so sadly you can't compare them to that. Um, but I did review the Z1, which again, included the pretty much identical performance, um, which not much of a difference. Um, so I guess basically to say, which is pretty much what I've been saying for a lot of aspects of this device, slight increase in quality, a slight update, but not much over the Z2. And to be honest, it's just the same with the display, it's the same with the performance, their slight increase is not a lot, but I think that's where Sony are trying to come from. They're basically saying is that instead of waiting another six months to get another update, we're gonna give you the device with that little incremental update, should you choose to want it, or if a person was on a contract and they couldn't get an update when the Z2 came out, and now they can, bam, they can get a device that's a little bit better than the Z2, and a little bit of a potential benefit for waiting so that's pretty much probably where they're coming from i guess there's no real, real way of knowing why they're doing what they're doing but uh yeah so that's pretty much it for the camera itself the front-facing camera i don't really put any effort into the reviews because they're pretty much taking the leave i don't think many people put any conscious decision in their devices i know hcc are bringing out 13 megapixel front-facing camera with led flash so that may be something people are going to start paying folks to but it's a 2.2 megapixel photo uh, lens uh, sensor that supports full hd recording so I mean, it's it's good for what you're gonna use it for. That's pretty much it. The last thing we wanna talk about is pretty much kind of like uh, the battery life and then overall. So we're gonna move on to that now. Okay, so one of the last aspects to talk about right now is the battery life. Sony have included a 3,100 milliamp battery, which is definitely, definitely on the high side of things. And it's nice to see that they're taking battery life serious. Um, because to be honest with you, we're just not seeing smartphones with insanely large batteries. We're seeing smartphones getting smaller and thinner and stuff. And it's just, it's not a nice thing to see because I think, to be honest with you, no matter how good a smartphone is, no matter how great it performs, no matter how good the, the display looks, the camera and aspects and stuff like that, if it's dead, it's crap, it doesn't do anything. And the idea is I want to see smartphones with bigger batteries. I want to see smartphones taking battery life way more serious. Sure, you can charge them, but to be perfectly honest with you, if your battery's at 20, 30% and you're about to head out, that's the last thing you want to do is just wait another 10, 15 minutes just to get a little bit of extra power. And I know Samsung are taking a little bit more serious as well with their fast uh, charging, which is definitely a thing worth seeing. But it, I mean, with Sony, they don't have a removable battery. So there's no quick fix here. There's no way I can take a battery and pop a new one in that's full and I'm at the door. I have to wait to charge this device. I don't want to be getting one of those battery covers to be thrown on it. So Sony have included a 3,100 milliamp battery. And thankfully, it does supply medium to heavy day usage. And what that means is now, for my test, what I do typically with smartphones is it's a broad test. This includes about, I can't remember the exact numbers, it's about 30 minutes of phone calls, um, 30, 40 minutes of YouTube, Netflix, checking emails, sending text messages throughout the day, about 30 minutes of photos or video recording, a few photos throughout the day, um, brightness is set at 50%, and I'm using 3G mostly with Wi-Fi every now and then. Um, you know, pretty much where I can. The idea is to do a broad test. Instead of just doing a single test where I do one aspect and finding out and performing against, I mean, one phone could do one thing better than another simply because it has a different device or chipset inside of it. So it can do that better simply because that device or that chip, that module uses less power when it's doing it. So the broad test idea is over a 12 hour period and this I had over 30% left at the end of the day. So I can safely say that you will get medium to heavy usage habits. You will get a day out of it. Um, with a little bit of adjustments here or there, you could probably get two days if needed. Um, Sony do have their you know, stamina, power saving thing, but to be honest with you, I don't like putting effort into using them because again, that pretty much like, I mean with the Samsung device, and it limits 90% of the phone and makes it kind of pointless. You're basically saying is that you can use it to make calls and that's it. And I mean, that's always been an option. It's just to shut off everything except making phone calls. But it is nice to see that they're kind of, they're, they're focusing more on the battery aspects rather than just you know feature 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 battery dies quicker because of it they're realizing okay well if we're going to be adding all this stuff that's just going to destroy our battery and that's probably what we're not seeing a higher resolution display because they're just saying that'll destroy the battery we didn't see it with the note 4 didn't really see it with the lg g3 the batteries weren't sacrificed all that much 
Uh, certainly not with the Note 4 anyway, and uh, not really at all with the LG G3. So it is nice to see that those phones didn't sacrifice much, but with the Sony Xperia Z3, you will definitely get a day usage out of your device with the uh, battery. But again, it's a broad test. So if you do more or less of the same thing, um, like if you're using the camera more, if you're on the phone more, if you're using 3G or LTE for that matter, I don't use LTE for any of the tests. I always switch it just to 3G, simply because LTE will drain the crap out of a battery and then it's not comparable to any sort of just 3G only device. So I just stick to 3G. If you're using LTE, your battery is gonna die quicker, simple as. So basically battery performance is commendable because I like being able to see a flagship device with a 5.2 inch 1080p display and it performed great. If you saw our Xperia Z3 compact review, you would have seen that, that battery uh, was insane. It's a 4.6 inch device, but its battery life was better than this. So that's what's nice about it. Um, so yeah, um, that's pretty much it, I guess, is to say is that the battery life is, it's day, day usage. You're gonna get a day out of it. But um, yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much it for our review of the Xperia Z3. Um, they've brought us, I mean, to, to sum up, Sony have brought us a solid, update over the z2 but it doesn't put much distance between it i mean it's not like uh, i guess to say it's like it's how do i say it? how do i put this it's an incremental update and that's ex i mean i know that's pretty much how they're advertising it, but that's exactly what it is it's an incremental update they're not trying to bring a whole new like overhaul design new chipsets with like fantastic upgrades and stuff like that and to be perfectly honest which i don't think any smartphone company is doing that now um they're incremental in, in in the best of the manner but it is thinner lighter has a better display has a somewhat improved camera and has better performance they're all increased but only slightly um the best increase or i guess update is the des is the uh, design of the device it's much much nicer than the previous one um and i guess I, I, I'm thinking that's where Sony are putting a lot of their efforts is the, is the saying is that um, if we're going to be up, uh, releasing devices every six months, we need to do something different with the design each time. Um, they're not going to pull an iPhone or an Apple or something like that and release an iPhone 4S that looks the exact same or could pass for the original one or anything like that. I mean, it's not just about the internals and just speeding up the device. Um, but they did do that. I mean, they do have a, a performance increase, just not much. Um, not even to be honest it's not even worth mentioning really but um yeah so i mean the best aspects of this device are definitely the design display goes fairly bright and um, it's one of the definitely the brightness the brightest displays i've seen from sony and the battery life is commendable this is all um this like i mean all of these aspects great design uh, great battery life and decent performance and uh, i mean pretty much fantastic camera uh, they're all they all go along with the fact that sony include waterproofing uh, with a device, which I think is a fantastic feature to be having with smartphones, um, especially in Ireland. I mean, it rains all the time, so you can easily drop it in a puddle. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a full metal frame device, fantastic looking glossy back, um, and IP68 certified for waterproofing, 1.5 meters, 30 minutes. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, definitely check out the gameplay video uh, for some performance aspects and a look at the better kind of like a better look at the display itself you can kind of see how it fares and you can check out the camera quality videos but also definitely check out the full review on geek tech that includes snippets of the ui which are actually taken from the xperia z3 compact but it's again identical and the camera ui and then the photos we've taken the videos we've taken are all included there as well the gameplay and pretty much just a complete breakdown of everything we've talked about today just in case you want to you know read it instead of watch it so i mean i guess it's probably a weird thing to say at the end of the video but um, basically, if you just want to refer to something or check something out or compare it better, it's a lot easier to do on the site itself. But I really hope you enjoyed watching. Please subscribe and like the video if you liked it. And uh, if you hope to see more videos in the future, definitely subscribe if you can. And we really hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, again, I've been Craig, and this is GeekTech.ie. Thanks.